Can we show that the harmonic sum, infinite sum, is positive infinity? Well known fact. Using this lemma, we first prove this lemma. So for any any infinite power series, right, convergence radius denoted r, as long as a n is non-negative, then we have the following conclusion. Right, I'm going to prove this. So it doesn't matter if the right hand side is convergent or divergent. It's always going to equal to this limit. Right? First, we use this sum function. Then we take the limit. x approaches r from the left hand side. So again, if it's convergent, it's convergent. If this is divergent, it's going to be positive infinity because a n is non-negative. Right? Positive terms, positive series. So this lemma. Right, case number one. If this infinite series is convergent, and then we have Abel second th second theory that says as long as this uh, infinite power series is convergent on the right hand side of the convergence radius, then its sum function has to be continuous from the left hand side. No problem. A bio second theory. Case number two. If this infinite numerical series is somehow divergent, like I said, every term is positive, right? So it has to be divergent to positive infinity. And also in this case, uh, convergence radius r cannot be zero; has to be strictly positive. So in this case, can we show this is also true? So in other words, this now is positive infinity. Is this also positive infinity? Limit x approaches r from the left hand side. Infinite sum n goes from zero to infinity. A n times x to the n is it also positive infinity? Okay, so given any a bigger than zero, according to the definition of the positive infinity, given any arbitrarily large positive, there exists capital N so that whenever little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, we always have this finite sum, partial sum, n goes from zero to capital N of a n times r to the n, always bigger than 2a, right? Why is it not a but 2a? Because I'm going to be using 2a later. It's the same meaning, same idea. So, so here we have this finite sum of this a n x to the n is equal to, of course, n from 0 to capital N, a n times r to the n divided by r to the n. Here is x to the n, so x divided by r together to the n. So this part, right, this is a finite sum, right, partial sum. So for any fixed little n, we always have this limit is of course 1 as x approaches r from the left hand side. Because the power is fixed, x is close enough to r, so the whole thing is close enough to 1. And so in other words, this can be far, far away from half, close, in, close enough to 1, far away from half. So bigger than half in some small enough neighborhood exists some delta bigger than zero, so that when r minus x, absolute value, right, already positive because x approaches r from the left hand side, bigger than zero, less than delta. In this small neighborhood, we always have this can be big, bigger than half. So this, this bit, in other words, this bit, right, bigger than half, so bigger than half times the rest is just n goes from 0 to capital N, 
this part a n times r to the n, right? And also, this partial sum a n r to the n is this bit, right? There, like I said, this is big enough, bigger than two a. So half times two a is just a, so bigger than a. Right? A is just any given arbitrarily large positive. So in other words, this can be arbitrarily large. And not only that, not only that, something is bigger than that. What? Infinite sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. A n times x to the n. This is partial sum, this is infinite sum. Right? Every term is positive or non-negative. Infinitely many positive terms, of course, add up to be bigger than uh, finitely many terms. Positive terms add up together. Right? So arbitrarily large. So really arbitrarily large. So in conclusion, we found a found a small enough neighborhood. As long as x lives in this neighborhood, we can always have this sum function, infinite sum. Sum function can be arbitrarily big. Exactly the definition of this limit as x approaches r from the left hand side. This limit is positive infinity. Right? Arbitrarily large. Now we move on to prove this well-known fact. So check. If if it uh, meets the criteria, so what, what is, so I construct a uh, sum function, infinite functional series, 1 over n times x to the power of n, infinite power series. So in which case, a n is just 1 over n, of course, positive, right? meets the criteria. And convergence radius, what is that? What is r? r is equal to 1 over limit supreme of n root of a n, 1 over n. And this already has a well-known limit, that is 1. Right? Lim sup is also 1. So convergence radius is just 1. So again, all criteria are uh, met. So again, we, have, we can use this conclusion. Right? So the limit of this must be equal to this infinite sum. Right? So in other words, this time this infinite sum is exactly n goes from 1 to infinity. a n, that is 1 over n. r to the n, 1 to the n, exactly 1. So this is exactly equal to this limit. x approaches 1 from the left hand side of this 1 to infinity, this infinite uh, a n times x n, this infinite power series. If we can work out its limit, must then it must equal to that, right? Is it positive infinity? Right, probably. So. Like I said, this sum function, we take its limit later. Now, like I said, I denote this sum power, uh, sum function, infinite uh, power series as f of x. So easily we can just uh, differentiate f of x. Uh, f of prime, of course, we uh, differentiate it term by term. So n times 1 over n, cancel that. x to the n minus 1, right? uh, totally legal, long story short, totally legal. So in that case, we can uh, easily say that this is a, a geometric series, right? So first term, that is 1, and common ratio is x, so 1 minus x is this bit. So again, so here we restrict, of course, x to be in this open interval. Negative 1 to 1. Uh, that's when it's meaningful. And of course, 
if we fix x, then we can say f of x minus f of 0 is equal to the definite integral 0 to x in terms of t dt 1 minus t, right? The same idea. f prime of t is 1 over 1 minus t, same idea. Uh, fix x, x still in this region. And that is what? Uh, that is, I think it's log 1 minus t, but there's a negative sign, so negative. Evaluate from 0 to x. And what is that? Negative log 1 minus x. 0 plug in here. Log 1, 0, no, gone. So this bit is exactly... And what is that? f of 0 is what? 0. That's exactly f of x. f of x equal to this. So what can we do now? Well, I say... Like I said, as long as we can work out this limit, right? In other words, x approach 1 from the left-hand side. This infinite power series denoted as f of x. Now it turns out to be this. Negative log 1 minus x. Right, x still in this uh, region, right? We're going to let x approach 1 from the left-hand side. So in that case, as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side, 1 minus x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, because x is less than 1, close enough to 1. So this is close enough to 0 positive at the same time. And so log 1 minus x approaching log 0 from the right-hand side, right? So negative infinity. Log, log 0, log 0, negative infinity. So negative, negative of log of the approach, negative, negative, positive infinity. All right, so really, like I said, we really worked out this limit of this infinite, infinite sum, right? infinite uh, functional series, power series, right? equal to exactly that. All right, so that's really indeed the positive infinity.